Turning now to your community focus, Rhode Island's Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee is here to talk about the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lieutenant Governor, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for the invitation. I know you have been a vocal advocate for small businesses to get more of the coronavirus relief money or that CARES Act funding for the federal government. And I understand you sent a letter to both the governor and the Commerce Secretary earlier this month about this topic. So can you just summarize for our viewers what that letter said? Yeah, so uh, we helped put a coalition of uh, small businesses together, Kim. Uh, we have several thousand right now. And so we're in constant contact with them. So there was $50 million appropriated for the Restore Rhode Island program. Uh, and we're asking that another 75 million get put in to the program uh, by December 1st. And in addition to that, now that there's the discussion about potential shutdowns on some of our small businesses, uh, we're asking for another 75 million on top of that for a total of $200 million to get distributed to any business who may be shut down uh, you know, during the month of December or partially shut down. And what was the response from the governor and from the Commerce Secretary? Well, we're in conversations with the, with the Secretary, uh, Secretary Pryor. Uh, you know, we have other asks that are in that letter as well to include all businesses in the state. Right now, uh, currently, uh, eye doctors, doctors, and that type of thing, uh, new businesses that opened up during COVID are not eligible for these grants, and they're all uh, in need. So we're asking that to be done as well. So. We're, we're expecting to get uh, hopefully some uh, good information this week uh, about how to expand that. But the new piece of information on the table right now is that the, you know, this, this uh, infection rate is so uh, important to uh, get on top of. And there's an anticipation that there could be a shutdowns uh, like we did earlier. Our small businesses can't uh, absorb the hit unless there's some help. So that's why we're encouraging another 75 million for December 1st out of the COVID, the CARES Act money, and an additional 75 million appropriated to get us up to 200 million. That would be in line with what most states our size are appropriating to help their small businesses. And it is allowable use to use our CARES Act money to help small businesses with grants. I know you mentioned the, the rising cases and the governor has said over and over it's a balance between the health and well-being of Rhode Islanders, but also the health and well-being of our economy and our small businesses. So which direction do you think the, uh, the state should take? Do you think we are heading for a lockdown? We should head for a lockdown or do you think it's more important that these businesses stay open right now? Well, I think, first of all, we need to take serious this idea of, of wearing a mask. And I've been you know, saying that it's been indecent, it's indecent exposure to actually not wear a mask. You wouldn't go out without your clothes on. And under these certain circumstances, we're exposing both our economy and our health and people are not really taking that serious to wear, wear their mask. So I think that said, I think that we should do everything we can uh, to protect our health and follow the guidelines that Dr. Scott and the governor has put forward. But also we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect the small businesses in the state. And that's why we've been asking for several months to make the, uh, the process easier for uh, the grants to be distributed. Uh, part of our ask right now, Kim, is that uh, up to $10,000 in grants, the restaurants will be in shut down uh, by uh, you know, a half an hour, an hour, uh, are gonna receive some dollars on a very short application. It might take five minutes to fill out that $10,000 grant. So we're asking for more flexibility in that space. And it's so important right now that we, that we really extend ourselves as a state. And the General Assembly, we're asking them to support this idea of uh, you know, allocating another 75 million, get a second or third check to these businesses before Christmas. And then also, if there's shutdowns, uh, as other states are doing right now, uh, and the governor has said that if we don't get this uh, you know, infection rate under control, that there is gonna be action taken by her office Let's put another $75 million on, on there so those businesses that are impacted by any shutdown can receive another check. Today, we were on a call with coalition members. Uh, one of the coalition members had just received a $30,000 check. If he received a second and a third check this month, and thousands of businesses were able to participate in those grants, that's going to help buy them time. I just want to shift gears a little bit. Last week we uh, celebrated Veterans Day and I understand you recently launched a campaign for the Rhode Island Military Family Relief Fund. So can you tell us uh, how people can donate or apply and what you're seeking to do this holiday season? 
Yeah, normally we do an Operation Holiday Cheer, Kim, where we where we put the Blue Star Moms, the Gold Star Moms, and all the sponsors and hundreds of volunteers to put out packages to any of our men and women who are serving outside the state during the holidays. That's been abbreviated. We're working with the Blue Star Moms to do that. But we're also seeing a, need, a, a real need in the Rhode Island Families uh, Relief Fund, uh, Military Relief Fund. Those funds help families who are, you know, people are serving, uh, during the time they're serving, their family incomes come down. We've activated over 500 National Guard during this time frame. So we're going to restore that funds. People can call our office at 222-2371, uh, and then we'll be happy to direct them. Or they can go right to our website, uh, our Lieutenant Governor's website, and there's a link there where they can uh, donate. And we're happy to say that we've reached half our goal uh, of twenty five of $50,000. So far, we've had $25,000 that has been appropriated and donated tax-free uh, as a tax deduction to help those families. And we have so many, you, you just see how much our, America, uh, our National Guard has participated in this, in this pandemic, whether it's uh, helping with the, with the testing or setting up the hospital sites or doing the tracing, the tracking. I mean, they're doing enormous work. We need to make sure that those families are taken care of during the holiday season. And Lieutenant Governor, just quickly before I let you go, there have been some rumblings that the governor could be tapped for a cabinet position with the Biden administration. She has downplayed her interest, but if she does head to D.C., would you be ready to assume her role? Yeah, I mean, that's been the, the top job constitutionally of our office is to be prepared in that unusual event where a governor moves out of that office and a lieutenant governor moves in. We know lieutenant governors, as I chaired the Lieutenant Governors Association a few years back. I know that lieutenant governors become governors. So that's our primary function is to be prepared. And if that happened, which is would be unusual, uh, our office is very much prepared. Uh, we have great working relationships with all the all the department heads in the state. So I think that uh, you know we're 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 ready if in fact that happened. But I think that it's a uh, you know the, in in this case um, it could happen, but uh, it would be unusual. Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee, thanks so much for your time today. Okay, Kim, thank you for having me.